Hello internet friends, Chris Masto here. We're back at the bench again with another one of these things. This was a request from Jeff on the Mikey Pipes Discord where I've been hanging out lately. So we're going to try to accommodate the request. I don't know if I'll be able to do this because this requires fairly sensitive uh, equipment that I don't have, but he wanted to know what the resistance or voltage drop across uh, Wago is compared to a wire nut. Um, we can, we can try it, find out. So I've set my power supply to one amp and I have um, uh, set my meter here to millivolts, as sensitive as it gets. So I can go to 0 0.001 millivolts and we will find out what we've got. So let's just hook the, uh, hook this thing up. Also, I just want, I got this, just got this brand new camera and I want to try it out, so. We're gonna see what we can see here. So first thing I'm gonna do is, with one hand, if I can, put these alligator clips on there. So this will pass one amp through this wire. This is solid 14 gauge wire. So we'll try it out. And then what we're gonna do is measure the voltage drop across that piece of wire. Just This is a baseline, so this is with no splices in the wire at all. I just kind of want to see what it looks like. Also, remember in the previous video where I said that I didn't have time or didn't want to go into what a four wire um, resistance measurement is? Well, this is exactly it here. See how there's four wires? That's what the four wire mode in the meter does. It passes a current through the device that you're measuring the resistance of, and then it uses the other two wires to look at the voltage drop across it. So this is something that the meter can do automatically, but in my case, the meter will only go down to one milliohm, whereas this should get us to one microohm, I guess. Again, you know, this is not, this is not the right kind of equipment to be making any precise measurement, but let's just try it. Let's turn the dang thing on and see what happens. So power supply on. So there is our one amp going through the dingus. And here is what we're seeing, three millivolts. So in theory, this is telling us 3.15 um, millivolts, which would translate because we have one amp to milliohms. So 0 0.00. 3151 um, ohms is what this the resistance of this length of wire is, if this is at all even close to accurate. So what we can do now is cut the power off for a moment and we'll take this wire and we'll take an identical length of wire, splice these two together with a Wago, move our measurement to the other end and uh, turn it back on. So I'm gonna do that with both hands to speed up the process and I'll be right back. Alrighty, everything's hooked up. Now we're gonna have the power going through here, through the Wago connector and to the other end. And we're doing the exact same measurement we did before. Let me turn the power on. One amp flowing through. And now our millivolts measurement is 7.33. So that's actually quite interesting and makes sense, right? If one of these wires was three and change, then two of them should be six and change, plus add the resistance for the Wago itself. So this is a believable measurement. So we're here we're at 7.326 milliohms of resistance with the Wago. Now I'm kind of curious if I sort of twist this and twi yeah, twiddle with it, yeah, you see it's changing. So part of what we're seeing in this measurement, of course, is not just the resistance of the wire, but I suspect it is dominated by the resistance of these junctions. These alligator clips are relatively cheap and um, they're not, you know, they're not super strong, so they don't make the tightest connection in the world onto this wire. And if I just press on it, I can get the resistance to go down. But nevertheless, if we're kind of comparing apples to apples, that's about what we've got. So let's real, realistically, let's call it 6.8. Um, so if we went from 3.2, 3.1 to 6.3, then we really only have 0.5 uh, milliohms of resistance added by this Wago, which is pretty impressive considering what's inside of it. 
So let's take the Wago off. We'll put, uh, before we put um, a wire nut on, let's do a quick experiment. What if I just touch these ends together? There we go. So I'm now just pushing on the ends of this and you can see the resistance I'm getting here is around 8.3. So I actually, I can't do as well even pressing really hard those together. Um, in fact, it's a struggle even to get that eight. Yeah, so I'm just physically pressing as hard as I can. Um, so that Wago does a pretty good job of connecting those wires. Just for comparison, this is a cheap lever uh, splice that I got from Amazon. 32 amps, 250 volts. Yeah, right. <laughs> No way, I only use these for low voltage applications. So let's stick that wire in there, clamp the clamp down and see what we've got. So this is, started out lower, it's going up. There we go, if I, if I physically manipulate it a little bit, just kind of pushing on it with my hand, which is probably not fair because I wasn't pushing on the way go. So if I let go of that, we're up to 20. Um, significantly poor performance compared to the Wago, which is kind of what you would expect. So now let's put the wire nut on. Again, I'm going to need both hands to do that. I am going to do this on camera because I want to show what I'm doing. Now, I, this is going to cause a lot of controversy, but um, I like to bring this up occasionally. The manufacturer of this device does not recommend that you twist the ends together before you put the wire nut on. So, so there. All right, and I usually put this on until the wire starts to twist itself like that. So now let's take a look and see if we start up our power supply. One amp, 0 0.6567. So I think this is the best connection yet. If I remember from just a few moments ago, we were getting eight something with the Wago. So this is, again, these are, these are absolutely minuscule differences, but it did uh, bring it down by a couple of milli ohms of resistance. Interesting. I wasn't really expecting that, but that's why you do the experiment. Now I want to do one more thing while we've got everything out, because that was solid wire. What if we try some stranded wire? I will get that ready to go. And by the way, they twist themselves. All right, let's repeat the experiment here. Same deal. I'm going to go faster just because we've already seen this. So uh, stranded wire, 3.214. That's, that's again the single piece of wire, same length, um, same. This is 14 gauge stranded cable, 600 volt rating. This is 14 gauge solid cable, 600 volt rating. So equivalent rating on these wires and very similar. We had 3.1 something, 3.2 on this one. That's well within the measurement error, I'm sure. So let's hook it up to the Wago and see what we get. Okay, the Wago is attached to the stranded wire, the power supply is on, and the reading is seven. So we're actually getting less. I think we're getting eight something with the solid wire. We're getting seven with the stranded wire. Let me put the wire nut on and see what that looks like. For you, my internet friends, I sacrificed a brand new wire nut. This is the one I used last time because somebody's gonna say you're not supposed to reuse those. So one amp, now we're getting 6.5. Eight something. I don't remember what the one was with the solid wire, but this is a very good connection. So there you go. Um, seems like wire nuts actually provide a slightly better connection than the way goes, but it's almost irrelevant and doesn't seem to make a big difference whether the wire is solid or stranded. So I hope that answers your question, Jeff. And uh, happy to take suggestions for additional videos that I should do. Just put them down in the comments. And I'll put a link to the Discord as well. There's a bunch of us hanging out there. It's a fun place. See you next time. Quick bonus. I just had to satisfy my curiosity about one more thing. Solid to stranded. That's always a pain in the butt with wire nuts. So 
With the Wego, we're getting 6.475, and with the wire nut, 6.105. So again, the wire nut does a slightly better job than the Wego, in a sense, if that's what you want to call better. But I hope that's, that's enough on this topic. I'm certainly done with it.